Good afternoon, everyone. The time now is four o'clock, and we're getting ready to start about a minute. Today is Thursday, June 15th, 2023. My name is Curtis Chapter Johnson, and I give a name for our president, Dr. Jawan Jackson, who is with us by the media. Hi, Dr. So, we're ready to get started. And thank you for giving us this opportunity to provide with the meetings. All right, may I have some? I'm calling it to order now. Now, I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So moved by Dr. Garrett Ford. Second. Second by Mr. Hanford. All those in favor? Oh, then of course we've got the agenda first of all. All those in favor approving the agenda, please let me you know by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Madam, Madam Vice Chair. Um, the Instructional Service Committee um, has 10 action items and one presentation. Uh, we're going to begin the committee with IS-1, Strategic Plan for Fiscal Year 2024. This is an action item, and Dr. Lovett is ready for us. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Board Vice President Mrs. Johnson, members of the Board of Education, and Superintendent Dr. Sims. Our community inspired 2023-2028 strategic plan framework, hashtag look for this more victory plan, represents a bold path forward for our students, staff, and family centered on achieving our ultimate vision of empowering students to learn, lead, innovate, and serve. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the recommended five-year strategic plan framework, Bill for Bid or Victory Plan, for adoption for the 2023-28 school year. Thank you, Dr. Rosen. Um, board members, share a motion for approval. Okay. Second. Motion seconded. Um, questions? Your hand is yes, sir. Okay. I love it. Um, you described this is described as a framework. Can you tell me what you mean by that? Yes, sir. Thank you for that question. So when we're speaking of this as a framework, this is simply to mean that there's more information that's coming. Ultimately, this first piece that we presented represents the foundation, and it's made up of that mission and vision. It also included the call to action. It also included the first piece of our goals. In other words, there's more pieces that we're going to be adding, such as the performance measures, which we, we will be bringing back to the board in the month of July. So the framework is the first part. And if you recall from the previous presentation, which that was back, of course, last month, we, we put it into two parts. We said that the framework is made up of two parts. The first part is that foundation. So this is the first part in the foundation. The second part is the implementation. When you put them together, it represents the full body of the work. So this is just the first piece that we are presenting today for the board to adopt. So we will be ultimately presented with sort of the concrete goals that we hope the strategic plan will achieve, how we're going to get there and what measures we're going to have to measure success. Absolutely. That's exactly what will happen in this next phase, which we're calling implementation. It will include those key performance measures, which is what you just spoke of. It'll be the goals along with the specifics around what we're going to measure, how we're going to measure in terms of the targets, and um, the, the baselines and the targets, but actually where we are now, which will be the baselines and the targets, which is where we hope to be at the end of five years. 
Well, uh, I would make my request in terms of helping me assess as we move forward. Yes, uh, I know we had an initiative starting the second semester of this school year in order to improve attendance. So I'd love to see what our attendance numbers look like uh, for this school year and if all possible um, back to roughly 2019 into the 19 school year. That's really the last typical school year we had. So if I could see those numbers, that would really help me as I look at the further steps you're going to be taking to uh, build on this framework. That's what we know. Thank you, sir. Do you have a question for Uber? No further questions. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word I. Aye. Opposed the same. The motion passes unanimously. Um, next on the agenda is the mayoral presentation, and that's uh, Dr. Johnson. Good afternoon, Board Vice President Johnson, Board Members, and Superintendent Dr. Sims. I'm excited to give you an overview of Amira, who is an artificially intelligent reading coach. In the overview, we will look at a description of Amira, some of the research behind Amira. Uh, you will see a video that shows the student experience, as well as some data from our schools and then our next steps. The biggest takeaway is that Amira is both a tool for teachers as well as a tutor for students. Research has shown that it can improve reading outcomes for students. It will enable all students to receive one-to-one -one needs based reading instruction while at school and at home. Amira is the first intelligent reading coach powered by AI. She listens to students read using voice recognition technology. She assesses their mastery continuously and learns them as a reader. She delivers science-based reading personalized interventions to students at just the right time, and she provides instant reports to teachers. The science of reading states that language comprehension and word recognition must be developed at the same time to build excellent reading skills. Everything Amira does is aligned to the science of reading philosophy. She is constantly identifying student strengths and growth areas and then delivering interventions accordingly. The more students read, the better Amira gets at this process. Human tutoring programs have gained popularity in recent years, and you can see on the bottom graph that they work. They accelerate reading growth significantly, as shown by the bottom gray line. A major district-wide study in Savannah, Georgia, by the Columbia Teachers College showed that Amira matched the acceleration, this acceleration after just 30 sessions, not even an entire year, as shown in the middle purple line. Another study out of Carnegie Mellon showed that with a full year of Amira for 30 minutes per week, reading growth almost doubled, as shown in the top blue line. Amira learning is a result of collective research and psychometrics reading science, artificial intelligence, and speech recognition research. The research comes from reputable universities, including Carnegie Mellon, John Hopkins, and the University of Texas Health Sciences. Now let's look at Amira in action. You will see two videos. One will show a first grade student's interaction with Amira, and one with the second will show a fourth grade student's interaction with Amira. There are three sounds in this word. You can see three boxes on the screen. Move the first red ball into the first box and say the first sound. Uh. 
Now put those sounds together and say the word. Yes. Super. Let's keep going. If he will go, may he is soft. Funny is a pretty hot word. Which picture best shows the word funny? <laughs> you are right. Yes. Yes. Let's go to work on stay. Stay is an important word. Say stay three times as fast as you can. Stay, 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 stay. Got it. Let's go on. Yes. Stay. I'm going to sound this word out. Mm, near. Makes near. Near. I like fun. And you will too. I asked if she wanted to make popcorn. She yelled and she hated that she hated popcorn. She stuffed a whole bag of chocolate chips in her mouth. Let's review one word together. There are five sounds in this word. You can see five boxes on the screen. Move the first red ball into the first box and say the first sound. Then move the other balls into the boxes and say each sound. Uh, uh. Now put those sounds together and say the word. Stop. Super. Before I knew it, she was growing so animals at me, running around the house, screaming and laughing, and flicking the lights on and off. It was downright crazy. So notice how Mira launches an intervention for the word. The story 26 word. The word stuff, and then students demonstrate mastery of the same word later in the story. Amira doesn't intervene on every word. She balances support to give healthy, productive struggle. The students read clearly. They don't get frustrated or impatient with interventions. They keep reading even if the cur cur cursor is slightly ahead or behind. You're finally here. A mirror learning tracks students' progress every time they are within their mirror learning environment, whether they're taking an assessment, engaging in practice, or doing progress monitoring. These insights appear in a mirror's reports shown on the screen. Practice with a mirror makes individual tutoring scalable, maximizing the number of students who can receive personalized attention. Reteaching and remediation in response to errors is immediate, helping to close skill gaps that are impeding reading mastery. A mirror collects, updates, and provides access to data on student progress for teacher review. A mirror learning serves as an assistant for teachers and a tutor for students. Among students who are English learners, a mirror has been shown to impact even greater growth. This has been accomplished because of Amir's ability to support vocabulary acquisition. During this school year, we've had four of our schools that have had interaction with Amir, Harley Elementary, Ingram High, Sonny Carter, and Southfield. At those sites, in 15 weeks of usage, those students who frequently used Amira 
fluency rates significantly outpace those who have used a mirror less frequently. Overall, the acceleration of fluency words per minute read using a mirror was 1.7 times that of non-users. This graph shows the practice minutes used at those schools by grade level. It is key to note that in grades K through two, students are learning to read, while we hope in grades three and above, students are reading to learn. If approved by the board, all students in grades K through five will have access to a mirror in school and while at home. This means they can use a mirror during the literacy block, intervention block, before and after school, and even on evenings and weekends. We plan to provide professional training to professional development training to all of our K-5 teachers and school administrators on the best practices to implement a mirror. We will finalize our implementation guidance, support, and monitoring. And then we also want to engage our parents and guardians with at home usage. Any questions? Mr. Moore. So help me um, understand something, Dr. Johnson. I see where children in this, ad, in this video are learning words. How do we determine if they understand what the words mean? So we have several. So a mirror does have an assessment portion that does have some of the vocabulary as well as comprehension assessments. But in addition to that, that is some of our teachers' role as well to do some of the additional assessment around those comprehension skills that they're learning in the classroom. Does this technology identify children who are having comprehension issues? It can, but the main focus is about fluency, word decoding, and language acquisition. We have other sources that focus more heavily on comprehension. Of course, we have to make sure that students can identify the words before they can even start to comprehend them. Is this uh, technology used in any other systems in Georgia? So it has been used in Savannah where the large study was done about the increase in reading growth. So we know that Savannah Chatham has used a mirror. We've also used it, of course, in those four schools, but we've also used it um, two years previously in our summer school program, and we saw great success there as well. Is it still being used in Savannah Chatham? I'm not sure of that. I don't want to say yes or no. All right, thank you. Dr. Paul. I have one question. Um, because they can use it at home, I can see how this could really increase fluency rates. Because, you know, the, one of the hardest things to do to check fluency rates, being a teacher, is you've got to sit here and you've got to check their fluency. And every time they made a mistake, you've got to mark it. So this helps dramatically with that because it, it's it's right there. So if they're doing it at school, that's one thing. But they're, they're doing it at home, they act it. And they're doing it at home. I mean, that could truly increase reading fluency. Yes, which is struggle. Which is the struggle in our district. Absolutely. And we want to build that automaticity so that they can comprehend. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, do I see your hand? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I like the fact that the students are really more fluent, but I'm like Mr. Morton. I'm just more, I'm just wondering about the comprehension. Are they comprehending? So the, the comprehension is a later skill, and so we really have to focus on them being able to pull the words off the page. That word recognition point is some of the our data is showing that that's where we're seeing some of our students struggle the most. And so we definitely think of mirror is going to definitely lead to them comprehension. Like um, Dr. Boyd was saying, if they're not able to fluently read, if they're stumbling in every five words or not able to only read 70% of the passage accurately, they're not going to comprehend because they're not pulling enough words off the page to comprehend. And my other question is, do we teach, still teach phonics? Yes, ma'am. I was just, as I was looking at the child struggling trying to read the sentence, I was just wondering if we had given her some fun that she probably could move on through it. And, and that's, a, so that's definitely important, and we absolutely do teach fun. That was during the thing like she had in the fun. And, and that was not one of our students, that was, was like, well, but, but yes, ma'am. Well, she didn't have friends with her reading. 
Yes, ma'am. And that's why we thought that, you know, more practical to mirror would help her as well. No further questions. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, so much for that wonderful presentation. We thank you. And now we will move on to IS3 Amira Action. So, um, be ready. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Amira Learning provides one-to-one -one reading tutoring, read oral reading fluency assessment, and the dyslexia risk screening for students in grades K through five. Amira listens while a student reads aloud, recording the session, and generating a run running record free of subjective errors and testing biases. Based on the student's reading level, the word being read, and the kind of error made, Amira selects from a toolkit of over 25 micro-interventions to build missing skills and accelerate reading growth by providing immediate corrective feedback. It is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education authorize the superintendent to approve the purchase of a mirror for use during the 23-24 school year in an amount not to exceed $427,068 from ESSER funds. Is there a motion for Senate uh, motion by Dr. Boyd? Second. Second. Second is two Jackson. All right, um, Jackson, second. A question. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I, I guess my only question is I know I, I see where it's being paid for this year out of ESSER funds. What would be the determination or what would we use to show improvement, assuming we wanted to renew it for next year? What kind of language or reading growth would you be looking for? So while we would want to look at the usage and the implementation to make sure that students were engaging, we also look at usage outside of the school day to see if it had caught on to our families as well. And then we would use some of that data that a mirror would produce. Um, in addition to that, we do have some external um, data or screeners such as STAR, which is going to come up later, which also provides an external indicator about our students' progress, and so we'll be looking at that as well. Thank you. Mr. Martin. I want to piggyback on a question that Sam asked. So this is an annual cost for this program? This would be an annual cost, yes, sir. And so if we renewed it next year, that money would come from the general fund? Yes, if we saw that that return on investment was high and we chose to renew it, it will come from general funds. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dilley. If I may add, uh, one of the things that's going to be critical as we move from this last year of ESSER funding to a year without ESSER funding is an assessment of all of our resources, specifically those related to literacy. What this year does for us is that it positions us after having researched the success of this program in another district, after having had conversation with the creators of Amira, after having tested it ourselves with our students in the classroom to give us this year, given really solid information about the success to use not just for a set of students, but for all of our K-5 students. What it further positions us to do as we think about our new strategic plan, one of the things that we call out is the implementation and the development of a robust numeracy and literacy plan. This logically fits into the thought process behind that. And as you'll see later, we'll talk more about science of reading supports. This is directly aligned to science of reading. It'll put us in a space where when it's time to assess all of our resources and prioritize those resources moving forward, given the constraints of any said budget at the time to have valid information to be able to make some good decisions about what will prioritize our approach as far as literacy is concerned. We don't want to miss this rare opportunity to lean fully into a mirror. It's artificial intelligence. It, it, it doesn't have much that compares to it in the industry, but we've seen tremendous benefit from artificial intelligence, and we just want to seize that opportunity right now. Any further questions? 
all those in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word aye. 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 On the agenda is IS4, Letter of Professional Development. And it is for action. That's you again, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Language Essentials for Teachers of Reading and Spelling is a professional development course based on the science of reading. It is designed to equip early childhood educators and administrators with the knowledge and skills needed to be experts in the areas of literacy and language development. It is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education authorize the superintendent to approve the purchase of letters for professional development for use during the 2023-2024 school year in an amount not to exceed $733,310 from ESSER funds. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Uh, is there a motion or approval? So moved. Is, is that Dr. Boyd? Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, motion uh, second, Dr. Boyd. Motion seconded by Dr. Boyd. Um, questions? Yes, Mr. Morgan. All right, Dr. Johnson, I know we have had a lot of emphasis on helping people, children learn how to read and make sure our teachers can do that. Why are we, why are you recommending this? So letters is an absolutely fabulous um, professional development that we have an opportunity to provide our students, our teachers, um, prior to the end of ESSER funds. Um, of course, as we know, teachers are going to have the greatest impact on our student achievement. So the better they are equipped and knowledgeable to provide excellent instruction, the better outcomes that our students will have. And so we feel like this is definitely a, a great uh, opportunity. Speaking on strategic plans, half effectiveness is our second goal and providing um, differentiated um, professional capacity building opportunities and aligns with it as well. And so as we focus on literacy in the upcoming year and continuously, we think that this is a great opportunity. How long has this been around? I did it in 2016, so at least since 2016. I guess the results speak for themselves, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? One other quick question. Am I right in my understanding that this is a one off expense? So, yes. Yeah, so part of the um, quote that is in there is that we are going to train some Bibb County facilitators. So after this year, we'll be able to um, train. This is going to do all of our elementary teachers and administrators. And then as new ones come on board that need this, we have facilitators that will be able to provide it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Any further questions, board members? There be no further questions. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. The um, IFS IS4 passes unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. Next is IS5, renewal of imagined learning. Dr. Johnson again. Thank you. Imagine Learning Virtual Platform Ingenuity is designed to meet the needs of the evolving classroom. It is implemented in person and virtually within our middle schools, high schools, and the VIP Academy. It provides a robust selection of core, elective, and honor courses that can be completed for initial credit as well as credit recovery. The curriculum is grounded in research and based on the rigor of high expectations for Georgia's standards. Courses are created by teams of experienced educators and instructional designers with expertise in curriculum development, instructional technology, and content area education. This year, 1,275 ingenuity courses were successfully completed by our students. It is recommended that the board authorize and approve the renewal of the Imagine Learning ingenuity contract for the 2023-2024 school year in amount not to exceed $1,568,811.30 from general funds. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Question for you. Motion. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Uh, motion by Mr. Uh, Johnson, Mr. Jackson, Jackson sorry, uh, by Mr. Jackson. Is there a second? Second. 
second of all, is that uh, Dr. Boyd, by Dr. Boyd, question for the first. No question? Your panel. I think my first year on the board was the first year we started using this. Um, what did, I guess, what did we do before Edgenuity? What was the, what was the way of getting uh, virtual instruction happening, or was there even any virtual instruction at all? So my historical context is that we use Edgenuity um, on a smaller scale before we had the VIP Academy for initial credit and um, credit recovery in our high schools, as well as in our middle schools for some honor courses. Um, prior to that, I'm not sure that there was a, a virtual option, but it was just smaller scale prior to. Thank you. Any further questions? No other questions. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 used to Mr. Jackson. <laughs> okay. Um, the motion passes uh, unanimously. Thank you. Next on the agenda is IS6, Renewal of School City Assessment Platform. Ms. Action. Dr. Wilson. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Since 2015, the Bibb County School District has used School City to implement a formative assessment process that provides teachers and district leaders with data to assist with instructional decisions. Access to this formative assessment data has assisted schools in determining student mastery of standards prior to the spring administration of standardized tests. It is recommended the Bibb County Board of Education approve the renewal of School City and authorize a purchase order for the district's formative assessment platform for the 2023-2024 school year in an amount not to exceed $182,466.24 from ESSER funds. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Is there a motion for approval board members? Ms. Allen, did I so move? Ms. Allen, motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Dr. Boyd, second. Questions? Yes, Mr. Morgan. Uh, since we're using ESSER funds to pay for the renewal of this program, I assume that if we continue it, we come out of the general fund in the next budget. Yes, sir, that's correct. Thank you. Any further questions? There be none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Uh, thank you, board members. Uh, I have passes unanimously. It will be sent to the consent agenda. Next is I have seven. The door of the room comes by 360 by action to Dr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Since 2017, Bibb County School District has utilized Renaissance Star 360 district-wide for universal screening, progress monitoring, differentiated instruction, and forecasting proficiency and mastery of state standards. With Renaissance Star 360, principals and teachers have access to valid and reliable data used to personalize student learning. It is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education approve the renewal of Renaissance Star 360 and authorize a purchase order not to exceed $2 million from ESSER and Title Funds. Board members, is there a motion? So this is that Dr. Abbey. That Dr. Boyd. Dr. Boyd motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Johnson. Questions? Yes, Mr. Martin. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> So when you say title ones, you mean federal funding? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Do you have a breakdown of how much of this two million is from ESSER versus uh, federal funding? I'm sorry, I don't have that, but I we can work on getting that that split for you. I would appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. I don't have a is is that Ms. Dr. Yes. I don't have a question. I have a comment, and I appreciate it. That you're using this for pre-K children. Thanks. 
Yes, ma'am. Is there a, a question or comment? There being none. Um, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word on. Aye. Opposed, saying no. <clears throat> IS7 passes unanimously. And we will excuse you now, Dr. Johnson. <laughs> but I'm going to you a you Okay. Uh, next is Enfilage. Uh, Enfilage, Mr. Fraser. Good afternoon, board members. Dr. Jackson is on the screen and Superintendent Dr. Sims. The Human Resources Department is recommending that the Bill County Board of Education approve the renewal of the contract with Interlodge Incorporated for the 2023-2024 school year to provide the district with access to highly qualified teacher candidates. It is recommended that the board approve the renewal of the contract with Interlodge for an amount not to exceed $342,000 for the 2023-2024 school year. The funding source is FY24 General Fund. This is the final renewal of the current three-year contract. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fraser. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Motion? Second. Who's the second? Ms. Cameron, thank you. Um, motion second. Uh, there is there questions? Are there questions? Ms. Hamlin? Uh, thank you. I'm um, just uh, how is the three hundred and forty two thousand dollars identified to specific teachers or is that what? It's really based on the amount of what. It's a lot of charges us to these teachers. It's the, their service charge. So I said teachers are paid based on their state funding. So they're in our allocation from the state. So whatever their level of certification and years of experience, that's what they're paid based on. Okay. Is there any Got it. All right. Yes. Thank you. Any further questions? All in favor of the motion, let me know by word I. I. I propose the same sound. I. I have it and uh, IS8 passes unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. Mr. Fraser, oh, we have you up again. So. Yes, ma'am. I won't be as long as Dr. Johnson, I promise. Well, <laughs> that's quite all right. Um, IS9 is PPG Home for Exchange contract. The Human Resources Department is recommending that the Bill County Board of Education approve the renewal of the contract with TPG Cultural Exchange for the 2023-2024 school year to provide the district with access to highly qualified teacher candidates. It is recommended that the board approve the renewal of the contract with TPG Cultural Exchange for an amount not to exceed $286,800 for the 2023-2024 school year. The funding source is the FY24 general fund budget. This is the final renewal for the current three year contract. Right. Uh, is there a motion from the board? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Hanlon, second. Thank you. Uh, motion and second. Any questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Walton. Uh, Mr. Frazier, um, let me make sure I got this straight. Uh, there are currently eight TPG teachers and recommending up 12 additional. No, sir, Mr. Borden, I see an error that I don't know how I called it three times. There are currently 19 TPG teachers. Uh, changed the number in parentheses, but I didn't change the number, the word. Uh, so there are 19, and we're looking for five additional, sometimes waiting. My actions and what we got crossed. So we actually have five additional recommendations for next year. This was, and we just did this. Well, I apologize. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Thank you. So well, I don't know what the real numbers are. That's all <laughs> <in> that. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Sir.
President, Dr. Johnson, board, and superintendent, Dr. Sams. As a way to address the culture and climate, the Bibb County School District began the implementation of Leader and B in 2015 with two schools piloting the initiative. Leader and B is now in all 33 schools with actually two more um, schools achieved the status last week. So that number is up to 12 White House schools. It is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education authorized the superintendent to fund leader and me for three hundred and forty two thousand one hundred and thirty dollars for FY twenty four through the ARP fund. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Is there a motion to what you heard? So moved. Is that Dr. Boyd? Dr. Boyd motion? Second. Second by Mr. Morton. Question. No questions. All in favor of the motion, let me be known by the word aye. 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 Opposed the same. The um, IS 10 passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. And finally, uh, IS, IS 11. Fiscal year 2024 Foothills Intergovernmental Agreement. Ms. Roberts. Good afternoon, Vice President Dr. Johnson, board members, Superintendent Dr. Sims. The passing of Georgia House Bill 87 has necessitated the Bill County Board of Education, as well as other contracting districts that have students enroll in Foothills Regional High School to consider signing a new intergovernmental agreement, which incorporates the new legislative changes, which will become in effect July 1st, 2023. The intergovernmental agreement between all contracting districts and Foothills was prepared by Foothills for all of the districts to sign. After reviewing this agreement prepared by Foothills and meeting with the Foothills superintendent, their CFO and legal counsel, Bibb County School District Administration requests our attorneys, John Court, to prepare an addendum to this agreement for the governance and operation of Foothills Regional High School that would be between Foothills and Bibb County School District. This addendum addresses concerns that are specific to the Bibb County School District. It is recommended that the Bibb County School Board of Education approved the intergovernmental agreement for the governance and operations of Foothills Regional High School between the Baldwin County School District, Barrow County School District, Bibb County School District, Butts County School District, Clark County School District, Franklin County School District, Green County School District, Jackson County School District, Jasper County School District, Madison County School District, Morgan County School District, Oglethorpe County School District, Social Circle City Schools, and Walton County School District, Griffin Teresa and Minnesota Teresa, and Foothills Regional High School. This agreement shall be effected with its adoption by the last of these contracting school districts and shall extend through June 30th, 2024. It will be subject to renewal as part of any subsequent petition submission that may be necessary for Foothills Regional High School to be authorized by the State Board of Education. The Bibb County School District Administration also recommends that the Bibb County Board of Education approve the addendum to the intergovernmental agreement for the governance and operations of Foothills between Foothills and Bibb County School District. This addendum will become effective July 1, 2023 and shall extend through June 30th, 2024. Questions? 
question? Yes. So, Ms. Roberts, the money that goes to Foothills per student comes through us? If it's a Bibb County student that's under the age of 18, the money would come to our district through our FTE count and then would be transferred over to um, Foothills. If a student is part time with Bibb County and part time with Foothills, then that pro rata share of the QBE money would be transferred. We would be invoiced after each of the foot um, FTE counts in the fall and then again in the spring. And who would be responsible for getting that money to Foothills? Would it be your office that does that? Yes, our office, my office would be responsible for transferring the money. But an individual will be assigned that will true up to, uh, to um, work with research and accountability on that FT count that we are making sure that the invoice is correct for the students that are enrolled with the district but attending Foothills. I know that sometimes in the past, in dealing with charter schools, we've been able to charge administrative fee for the money that we collect and then transfer to the receiving entity. Is that is that happening here or is they get 100% of the, that amount? The district will receive $100,000 from Foothills for each year that we are under an agreement. This is new. Before, we've not received any money from Foothills. So we will receive half of that money um, at the beginning of the school year, and then the other half after um, second semester begins. I had one question about the addendum. But the Foothills likes to use abbreviations rather than tell me what they're actually talking about. Uh, page three, they use Foothill will hire SROs. We need to be examining student resource officer. Yes. Currently, the district is providing security for Foothills, and we're paying for that. Under the new agreement, Foothills will now pay for that service. So that will be a savings to the district. And they're going to be located at Central? Yes, sir. Do we know how they'll access the building in order to reach their wing where this is happening? I will defer to Dr. Lovitz on that one. Okay, in terms of access, we have not talked about changing the access just yet. Currently, the access that they have in place will remain as far as we know, but that is something that we can take back. We have not talked about changing that access level. Um, currently, I don't know if Sam is, is here behind and can speak specifically to that, but we have not talked about changing the access level just yet. So that's something that we can take back, and Dr. Sims has a hand up. We can take that back to get more information about the specifics of their access level. I have observed uh, the access. There is a door. There's a main entrance to the building. There's a door to the left of that main entrance uh, that the students go in and then down said wing. I'm not sure of the specific wing. That is the entrance and exit door right to the left of the main entrance. I certainly want them to have access to the program, but I don't want them to have access to any portion of the school that they don't need in order to participate. Understood. Um, yeah, when you say student resource officer, are we talking about one, two, do we know? And so specifically, we're talking about the school resource officer there. Um, and so we can talk to them about how many. Right now, I don't know exactly how many they have in place. I do know that we provide that. We are providing that through our campus police. And I do know that we have at least one who's going over because we're sending them from another school. But for the purpose of this agreement, we have not outlined with them exactly how many they are going to be providing. I would anticipate it at least would be that one that we have right now may be replacing that. So those would be some, some questions we can take back and get more specific answers on. Okay, again, I, I don't want to deny them access and when you do the program, I just want to make sure that they don't use the privilege. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? No further questions. All in favor of the motion. Let it be known that you're done. Opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much, Robert.
um, at this time, um, at a chair, slash chair. Um, this completes the business of the committee meeting, but we are going to be sending to the consent agenda uh, IS1, IS3, IS4, IS5, IS6, IS7, IS8, IS9, IS10, and IS11. And good afternoon. Now we're here from Business Support Services Committee. That would be Ms. Chrissy Hammond. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, our first item is number FSS1, and it is the monthly presentation of the financial statements by Ms. Sherry Roberts. Tonight we will discuss the financial statements for April 30th, 2023. The general fund for the 10 months ending April 30th. Here on the balance sheet, you'll see that our total assets is 113.4 million. Our liabilities, 32.3 million. Our total fund balance, 81 million. Our investments make up 73% of our general fund assets. Receivables, 20% and cash, 7%. On the statement of revenues and expenditures for the general fund for the 10 months, the approved budget for revenue is 211.1 million. We have received 200.4 million to date, or 94.91% of the budget. Expenditures approved budget, 221.9 million. Spent and encumbered, 195.3 million, with a remaining balance as of April 30th of 26.6 million, which is, we have committed 88.01% of the budget. Here it shows that for our revenues, state revenues makes up 52% of our budget. Local sources, which is primarily our tax revenues, is 45% and federal sources, 3%. For our expenditures by function, instruction is 61% of our general fund expenditures. When you add to that, improvement of instructional services and people services makes up 69% of our general fund expenditures. Next, we'll look at all funds for the 10 months. On the balance sheet, total assets for all funds combined is 734.6 million, liabilities 73.5 million, and total fund balance of 661.1 million. Cash and investments on hand are our total liquid assets. You'll see the cash is 13.3 million, investments 143.6 million for total liquid assets of 156.9 million. Capital assets are 72% of our total assets for all funds. Investments 20%. On our statement of revenue and expenditures for all funds for the 10 months ending April 30th, the approved budget for our revenues is 398.8 million, of which we have received 330.6 million, or 82.89% of the budgeted funds. Expenditures budgeted was 418.3 million. Committed today is 330.4 million or 78.98% have been committed as of the 10 months ending April 30th. Here is an update on our ESSER balances for our CARES fund, which ends September 30th, 2023. We have expended 96% of the funds, which is 57.4 million. Remaining budget is 2.4 million. For our ARP funds, we spent 60% or 59.9 million with 40.5 million remaining to be spent. Next, we'll look at our East Loss programs. For our 2016 East Loss, we have cash and investments remaining of 2.6 million to be um, expensed. We have for our 2021 East Loss 
program cash and investments of 40.2 million. Our cumulative receipts and interest income is 91 million, and our cumulative expenditures have been 43.4 million. And we currently have an additional 7.3 million encumbered for total committed expenditures of 50.7 million. For our update on our bonds of 2020, which was for our technology project, we have cash and investments still remaining to be spent of 1.2 million. And on our debt service fund, which will pay off the bonds, we still have an outstanding debt of 5,375,000. And the final payment will be made on March 1st, 2024, for principal and interest of 5,509,375. Is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Continuing on, number FSS2, final approval of the fiscal year 24 superintendent's recommended budget. Ms. Roberts. After three board work sessions, followed by the tentative adoption of the superintendent's FY 2024 recommended budget, and two public hearings, the Bibb County School District Administration is now seeking the Bibb County Board of Education's final approval of the superintendent's FY 2024 recommended budget. Total revenues and transfers in for all funds total $391.8 million, and total expenditures and transfers out total $410.7 million. Projected pending fund balance for all funds being budgeted is $103.7 million. The recommendation to the Bibb County School District recommends that the Bibb County Board of Education approve the superintendent FY 2024 recommended budget as presented. Thank you. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Dr. Woodford, seconded by Dr. Dillard. Are there any questions? Okay. Mr. Morton. Uh, Ms. Roberts, it's my understanding with this budget, the village rate would stay the same as it was last year. Is that correct? This um, budget does not have any um, of the millage rate, but when this budget was tentatively approved, we did not have a new digest. So it is it is uh, on the taxes being the same as we collected in FY 23. That millage rate was 16.720. Yes. Um, at the work sessions we've had, you have outlined potential savings that the system could look at in trying to deal with its financial situation. Does this budget have any specific savings measures in it? There were some savings um, that were request some items that were requested that we did not put in the budget. So we had over it was around 15 positions that were requested that we did not approve that the superintendent did not approve to put into this budget. We also reduced expenditures operationally by roughly 600,000. So we did make some savings in this budget. But of course, we did add positions also at the school level. So I realize we did not add positions that have been requested, but what I'm hearing is the you point to savings in this budget is roughly six hundred thousand dollars from operational expenses. From operational, yes, sir. Um, just just a comment. Um, I appreciate the work that has been done here. Very difficult stuff to deal with. Reality is that tonight we have approved possibly two and a half million dollars of programs that we will not be able to pay for using ARP funds next year. And I've heard the commitment to Dr. Sims that he's going to look at all these programs and determine what we actually need. 
And I appreciate that because it's needed. And one of the concerns I have is we keep add, it seems to be adding programs and programs and who's going to be expected to carry those out, teachers and administrators who already have significant amount of duties. I want us to find the stuff that works the best. Uh, that, and there may be things we'd like to do, but can't do. But it, what I'd like to see moving forward is some really, and I know you're doing it, okay, um, serious look at how we deal with our financial issues moving forward. Uh, because I know we're going to have some tough decisions to make. And I think it's important to show the community that we're doing everything we can to tighten our belt and prioritize because that's the same thing people do when economic times are tough for them. So I appreciate what you've done here. Um, and thank you. Sir. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Roberts, if you would remind us um, of some of the circumstances that are surrounding this year's budget as relates to costs. Yes, sir. We had several um, items that were mandated by the state. Um, we had the largest item was um, the, in the drastic increase in health insurance that we did not know about. March. Um, so that affects our certified staff went up to over $18,000 a year per person. That was a hundred percent of uh, increase up to the max that they are charging now. And the state funds the earned positions, but it does not firm fund those certified positions that we provide that are over and above. So all of those additional teachers, assistant principals, and other certified positions that we fund locally, it does not pay that increase um, on the health insurance. At the same time, there was a 2000 salary increase for our certified employees. And once again, the state only funds that for the positions that are earned on our QBE allotment sheet. For all other positions, the district must pay for that out of its local revenue, which is our tax revenue. For the classified insurance, they're also phasing that in, so it's not the large um, impact that we originally thought that it would be the same as the certified staff. But they did not pay a single dollar on that amount. We also want to that wanted to value all of our employees, so we did put a minimum two percent raise for all of our classified employees, which is one hundred percent funded by the district. Um, also, our school nutrition and the ones that are non-supervisory positions, our bus drivers and our bus monitors receive a 5.1% increase. That is um, in this budget. Thank you. And I, I just want to, I'm sorry, were you done? Those are the large items. There were some others. And there are definitely, a, uh, thank you for that reminder, because I think it's important for us to be reminded of that as we find ourselves with this particular budget here uh, tonight that we have been working on diligently um, for months. It's important to remember that um, CARES funding and the um, ARP funding um, assisted us to ensure that during this very difficult time period uh, that students were able to, to have the resources they needed uh, to indeed uh, be successful uh, during the pandemic. And so the funding allowed for us to put a rug on these students. And we have to be sure that we're not uh, removing the rug uh, from under our students without, um, you know, making sure that they have the resources they need to be successful. I want to applaud the work of the teaching and learning department for making sure that as we are considering different softwares and technologies and um, different uh, um, for our students that they are positing those in some schools 
before bringing it back to the board for recommendation for us to consider um, the best practice to implement district wide. So I want to applaud the teaching learning department, but also applaud uh, our budget and finance team for a job well done on this on this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say by saying aye. 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 All opposed saying sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. Chair yes, Hannah. sir. If I may. You may. Uh, I just want to take a moment to uh, affirm our commitment moving forward as it relates to looking carefully at our budget, prioritizing those things that we know will help boost student achievement and meet our goals. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing moving forward is one to make sure that from a program and resource standpoint that we make it all make sense. I've already tasked Dr. Johnson as an example to work with his team to make sure that everybody understands as we bring more programming or additional resources that we make it make sense from an implementation standpoint so that we affirm for the Board of Education and also for the district that we're not trying to add on anything, but we're trying to ensure that we have a robust experience that we put in place for all of our students. I also want to remind uh, all of us that if you recall, I think it was board work session number three, well, we were careful to identify district additions with that difference between 2223, 2324 was roughly $700,000 compared to mandated additions where that difference was five million four hundred thousand plus dollars. So even as you look at that seven hundred six thousand dollar addition, that is in response to us trying to do our absolute best to be good stewards of the funds that are available to us. And I just want to affirm our commitment to make sure as we sunset our ESSER funding that we're very smart, very uh, priority based in terms of moving forward. I also want to take a moment to thank Shannon Roberts and her team. Uh, we worked very closely together throughout this whole process. Her team has done a phenomenal job in the midst of some very tough circumstances to create a budget in unprecedented times. Thank you. Thank you so much. Continuing on, number FSS3, fiscal year 2023 attorney's fees. At the October 21st, 2021 board meeting, the Board of Education first approved a September 3rd, 2021 letter of engagement with Jones Court LLP in the amount of $200,000 for non extraordinary legal services and $500,000 for extraordinary legal services for fiscal year 2022. The same agreement was approved by the board on June 16th, 2022 for FY 2023. For the fiscal year 2024, there will be no changes in the legal fee for this upcoming year. The recommendation it is recommended that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to sign the attached letter of engagement dated May 22nd, 2023, with Jones Court for non extraordinary legal services and expenses of $200,000 and issue a FY 2024 purchase order for this amount. It is also recommended that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to issue a second blanket purchase order to Jones Corp LLP in the amount of 500,000 to cover any extraordinary legal services and expenses that may occur in FY 2024. This recommendation in its entirety is for the Board of Education to authorize the superintendent to issue purchase orders to Jones Court for legal services and expenses for fiscal year 2024 for a combined total of 700,000 and to sign the letter of engagement. You heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Dr. Dillard. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The 
motion carries and will be sent to the consent agenda. The next item is number FSS4, district wide HVAC replacement and construction. Uh, Mr. Kitchens. Good afternoon, board members, president, vice president Johnson, board superintendent. Uh, as far as the ESSER funding project, the school district will be implementing district wide HVAC replacements. This memorandum is recommended to the firm to provide the construction contractor services for this project. Uh, the project RFP was released on April 24, 2023, with a mandatory pre proposal meeting. Uh, two construction firms submitted final proposals, but only one of the construction firms was responsive to the RFP, the criteria set in the RFP. Uh, the proposals were reviewed based on the criteria set forth in that RFP, and it's recommended the Duke County Board of Education authorized superintendent enter into contract with handling air conditioning, air conditioning and sheet metal incorporated to provide construction contractor services for district wide HVAC replacement in amount not to exceed seven million two hundred ninety seven thousand two hundred forty one dollars. Uh, these funds will be paid for out of extra funding. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Moved by Dr. Dillard, seconded by Mr. Morton. Are there questions? Um, I notice if this is paid out of ESSER funding, um, I would think that this would usually would be something that would be paid out of East Floss. Is that correct? Correct. Sure. And because of the changes in East Blast, we were able to go to ESSER funding to fund this. Is, is that what I'm... So the ESSER funding was provided for relief of some COVID-related issues. Uh, HVAC air quality is one of those. So this was eligible under our uh, ESSER funding project. So it actually was able to make some support of the Lost program. If you remember, um, the last meeting, we come back and talk about the cost of material being up. This is a great thing for that. It was a one time, uh, a one time purchase for the HVAC for 5,500. Um, how was this to determine the budget to, I guess, how did we determine that this would be moved to ESSER funding? And was it part of the, what was originally anticipated? I guess what got displaced out of ESSER funding? So, so with all extra funding, um, put in applications to for uh, Some of the projects were disqualified or, or not allowed, um, and the ones that were not allowed, that money went back for the projects that were pre-approved. So, uh, HVAC was one that they told us was pre-approved uh, because of the air quality component of it. Uh, so we know that was a pre-approved, and we initially put in the first request was for about half this amount and then some other projects were denied so okay, now we can get some of our some more units uh, with these that's out and uh, as you know that's when we bring it back to you guys to, to approve so you approved a, a dollar amount for the first phase and then as projects were were not approved that's how we got to get bid the increase to the product and that's what we need I guess my, my concern is that, you know, the extra funds are flowing and we don't really see the flow. Does that make sense? So, uh, anyway, are there other questions? <laughs> here's this project, here's this project, here's what was approved. Here's, uh, please. <laughs> We want to make sure we spend every dollar of our extra funds. So we did have HVAC at 3.9 million in the original budget that the board approved. Okay. So we have um, had some vacancies in the position. If you remember, we had a lot of positions that were approved. So we've had some paraprofessional vacancies. We've had some teaching vacancies. So some of that money also has been freed up. And that's why we, we are working with um, Dr. Rogers and the um, Department of District Effectiveness to make sure that we are going to be on target to not have to turn anyone back. And that's when we 
said that this would be a good way to spend that money um, on these uh, HVACs. If we would not have enough money in the East Lot to pay them to cover it with all the rising costs. Yeah, I don't. Just, I guess my my concern is that you know I would like to see again, you know, what is being spent versus what was budgeted. I, I know you brought it to us, I guess, three or four months ago, but in the next couple of months, it would be nice to see where we are with how many are left to go. We have spent at. What a year and about four months left. But yes, we'll. I'll definitely um, do a full report again um, at once we close the books for June. That'll probably be August. We'll have that closed. And I'll be giving you every month where we are. Thank you so much. Hearing no other questions, all those in favor of the motion, please stay by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. The next item mm -hmm. is number FSS5, wireless access points. Ms. Beverly? Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson, Superintendent Dr. Sims, and board members. The Technology Service Division is seeking board approval for wireless access points in our district. Throughout the duration of this project, we will be working with AIOS. This is off of the request of RIP 23-046, and it will be utilized, finance utilized in the 2021 East Block. It is recommended that the Bend County Board of Education authorize the purchase order to AIOS group for the district wireless access points project in the amount not to exceed $2,913,628.28. The funding source is the 2021 East Blocks. You've read the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Dr. Dillard. Are there any questions? Mr. Morton. Uh, Mrs. Wilson Beverly, um, assuming we approve this, how long do you expect this to last? I want to defer to Mel. Yes, sir. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, the life expectancy is that the question you're asking yes, on the access points. So generally, they'll go anywhere five to ten years. We usually have it on about a five-year rotation as far as the budget comes with, because the advancement of technology usually drives that within five years it's time to refresh. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Other questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please stay by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. The next item is number FSS6, G GSBA Risk Management Fund Insurance Renewal. Mr. Gallo. Good afternoon, Vice President Johnson, Board Members, and Superintendent Dr. Nancy. The Safety Security Department presents this memorandum to renew the property, auto liability, general liability, school leaders liability, law enforcement liability, and cyber liability insurance policies to the GFBA risk management fund for the period 7123 to 7124 in the amount of $1,154,940. The recommendation is to renew the property, auto liability, general liability, school leaders liability, law enforcement liability, and cyber liability insurance policies with the GSBA risk management fund for the period 7123 to 7124 in the amount of $1,154,940. These funds will be paid out of the fund. You've heard the recommended dation. Is there a motion to approve? A move. By Dr. Dillard, Second. seconded by Dr. Excuse me, by Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say by saying aye. 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 All, opposed. all opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. 
Thank you, Mr. Gallo. The next item is number FSS7, approval of paper and chemical bid renewal. Ms. Schumann. Good evening, Vice President Johnson, Board members, and Superintendent Dr. Sands. The School Nutrition Department is seeking board approval for renewal to renew the award under RFP 21-030 for paper and chemical supplies in the fiscal year 2023-2024 for $1,407,935. This award is used to issue purchase orders that need on an as-need basis for paper and chemical supplies to provide efficient and compliant school nutrition operations for Bibb County School District. This, this is the second of three renewals. You heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? How about you? Oh, not yet. Yeah. It's recommended that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to issue a purchase order to each vendor on an as needed basis, not to exceed the listed amount of $1,407,935 to provide paper and chemical supplies for all school and central kitchens. The funds will be paid out of the school nutrition fund. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Dr. Diller. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All aye. Favor, aye. Same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. The next item, item is number FSS8, approval of food bid renewal. The school nutrition department is seeking board approval to renew the award under RFP 21-015 for food products in the fiscal year 2023-2024 for $6,259,897. This award is issued to purchase orders on an as needed basis for food items to provide meal service to Bibb County School District students. This is the second of three renewals. It is recommended that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to issue a purchase order to each vendor on an as needed basis, not to exceed the listed total amount of $6,259,897 to provide food items for all schools and central kitchens. These funds will be paid out of the school nutrition fund. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Dr. Boyd, second by Dr. Whitford. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All, opposed, all opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. Um, and now I have a question because we do have item FSS9, which is not on the agenda. Um, do we need to uh, make a motion to add it to the agenda? I believe it would need to make. And I have a motion to add FSS9, which is uh, fiscal year 2024 school nutrition procurement plan and procedures, and you have the green sheet. Uh, it was uh, put on the uh, main agenda, but uh, not on the uh, committee agenda. So, so I guess I moved by Mr. Morton, second by Mr. Jackson. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion to add to the agenda is it passes unanimously. Um, FSS 9, please. Good evening once again. The procurement department is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education approve the FY 2024 School Nutrition Procurement Plan and Procedures. It is recommended that the Bibb County Board of Education approve the FY 24 School Nutrition Procurement Plan and Procedures as presented. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Dr. Moved by Dr. Woodford, seconded by Dr. Dillard. Are there any questions? 
All in favor state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously and will be sent to the consent agenda. Madam Vice Chair, this uh, concludes the work of the Fiscal Support Services Committee. Items FSS2 through FSS9 will be sent to the consent agenda. Thank you, Ms. Cameron. Now we will hear from Mr. Morton on policies and all right, thank, thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, policies and rules has three action items. The first is PR1, CGPE, Administrative Personnel, Non-School Employment. Good afternoon, President Jackson, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Sims. It's good to be with you this afternoon. The district is presenting policies C, CGPE, Administrative Personnel, Non-School Employment, for second reading. There were no changes to, uh, made to policy CGPE. Uh, between first and second reading, and it is recommended that the Fifth County Board of Education approve the revision of policy CGBP, Administrative Personnel Non-School Employment. Uh, board members, you've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by uh, Vice President Johnson, second by Dr. Dillard. Um, any discussion? There be none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. There is none. PR1 passes unanimously and will go to the consent agenda. Next is PR2 policy DJE purchasing. Ms. Hill. The district is presenting policy DJE purchasing for second reading. There have been no changes made between first and second reading to policy DJE purchasing, and there are also no changes made to the regulation DJE R1 purchasing. Uh, board members, you've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Ms. Allen. Is that a second, Dr. Dillon? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Dillon. Um, any discussion? Uh, there being none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. There is none, and uh, PR2 passes unanimously. Next is PR3 DJ EAC purchasing or credit card use. Ms. Hill. The district is presenting policy DJ EAC purchasing or credit card use for second reading. There have been no revisions to policy DJ EAC between first and second reading, and we have not received any feedback yet on the uh, regulation that goes with DJ EAC. It is recommended that the Fifth County Board of Education approve the revision of policy DJ EAC for purchasing or credit card use. Uh, you've heard the recommendation, board members. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Vice President Johnson got a, had a motion, second by Dr. Garrett. What is that for? All right. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, let me know by the word aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Uh, there is none in that passage unanimously. Um, I do want to say one thing that I, a concern I had possibly with the regulation is that when you look at violations, uh, you have a first step, a first step, which is a first violation where there's a written warning and immediately pay back the misappropriated funds. I could envision a circumstance where we had an egregious abuse of this policy where the decision may be made, this is an employee that needs to go. And so I want to rely, urge, urge to look at maintaining as much flexibility as we can in dealing with any violations of this. So we don't have someone arguing, hey, I get to hang around for a little while, even though they clearly have done something consistent with their obligation to the school. So that, that's the only comment I have. Thank you. And thank you. And I will speak with Ms. Roberts on that. We will put our heads together to address that concern. Uh, next, we have PR4, Policy JV Student Attendance, which is an information item. The district is presenting Policy JV Student Attendance for first reading. Uh, an introductory paragraph is all as added to Policy JV, setting forth the board's expectation regarding student attendance and emphasizing the importance of student attendance. Minor changes are made to policy JB to make it consistent with other policies in the districts. Next steps will be for the district to post policy JB 
uh, student attendance on assembly to receive input from board members and the stakeholders for 30 days. The policy will be brought to the next board meeting for second and final board adoption and approval. And next we have PR5, which is policy JBB, interest, entrance age, which is also for first reading. Ms. Hill. Yes, the district is presenting policy JBB, entrance age for first reading. Minor changes are made to policy JBB, entrance age, to make this policy consistent with other district's policies. References to the applicable state law, state board of education rule, and district regulation are also added to policy JBB. Next steps will be as previously stated. And finally, we have PR6, which is policy KC, board community relations, also for first reading. Yeah. Uh, policy KC is law for first reading. Policy KC for community relations is updated to set forth the board's expectations of communicating with community members. The revised policy also provides that the board and the superintendent or his or her designee will work together to identify appropriate protocols for addressing and engaging with community members. A review of other school district policies found that policy KC generally addresses board communications with community members. The provisions being removed from policy KC that address use of community facilities or the use of religious facilities for school functions is addressed through other district protocol. For example, policy KEA, KEAA, community activities and performance by students also addresses students engaging in events at community functions or a religious facilities. So, and next step will be previously stated. All right, uh, thank you, Ms. Hill. Uh, Vice President Johnson, that concludes the report of policy and rules. PR1, PR2, and PR3 pass unanimously, and we go to the Senate agenda. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you for giving us back on track. Thank you. Next, we will hear from personnel services. I don't see Mr. Freeman on the screen. So I guess that would be really much to us. Ma'am, I will be presenting. All right. Good afternoon. On behalf of our vice, uh, uh, on behalf of our chair, Mr. James Freeman, who was on uh, joining us virtually, um, I will be presenting for the personal services. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. And then a motion for scheduling for purposes of uh, personal matters, future acquisition of property. Pending litigation, school safety, cyber security. Second. A motion by Dr. Dillon, second by Dr. Gordon. Questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. We are now in the table. All right, we will return at 5.55 of the Pull up me. We'll try. Be back on time. So they're going to leave, but they should come back. Yeah, wouldn't let me do it because it's 